Hey everyone, this is Gilbert with Interactive Utopia and this week we're going to be looking at the Google Translate API. All right, we're going to do an example with PHP and curl. Uh, pretty simple if you've been looking at the videos from before and this is pretty much what it's going to look like. We are going to provide a string that it's going to be in English and the API is going to provide us with a translation which is gonna be on Spanish okay so let's get started alrighty then well I would like to start by introducing myself my name is Gilbert and I'm with interactive utopia if you need any help with, with your web development projects please do feel free to reach out if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and if you have any questions please leave them in the comment box below and of course don't forget to subscribe to my channel so let's get started uh, all of the code it's gonna be on my github if you need to go to uh, if you need the code go to github.com forward slash Gilberto Cortez you're gonna find the project called Google API's with PHP and all the code from this week and the past week it's gonna be on there all right so uh, just in case you need that uh, and like always the, remember there is documentation on what we're gonna be doing there's reference guides uh, there's quick starts uh, I'm gonna post the links on the description down below so if you need any help uh, you know definitely go over there and go, go to the documentation and read a little bit more on that so uh, let's get started by opening up Visual Studio Code and uh, I'm gonna pretty much go through the code like every week all right if you have any questions again don't f don't forget to leave them in the box below and I'll try to help you out the best that I can um, like always it, this is gonna be very similar to the past weeks that we've been working on with the Google API's uh, we're using our curl class that was made on week one and um, and uh, yeah, so basically we are, you know, starting the the uh, the code with starting the server session. That's where we stored all of our information. Um, you know, when when we go to Google and log in, we need we get those credentials, so we have them stored on the um, on the server session, so that we can use it throughout the different files. All right, so if you got questions, go to the video from before and you'll be able to find them right there. Um, uh, after that, we are telling PHP to display all errors. So if there's any problems, if there's a semicolon missing or there's a variable missing, something like that, it's gonna display it to us. It's good right now because we're developing, uh, so if there's any bugs, we need to find them quickly. Uh, so may maybe not so good for, an everyday application something that's already published but uh, for right now you know I would recommend it highly uh, and we go ahead and include or require better said the curl class uh, which again we uh, I created before uh, it, it just including it in the file and then we are starting a new uh, object missing the O right here uh, we're starting a new object for that curl server and we're passing it the Google access tokens which we retrieved again once we made that log login one very important thing to mention um, on the link login you're gonna have to modify the the scopes a little bit um, I believe it's gonna be right here yes so uh, we are already using the cloud platform scope uh, if you don't have it you know definitely add it but this is the one we're gonna be needing cloud translation so uh, don't forget to change it when you create the uh, login request that we're gonna that you're gonna be needing that extra scope in there that way you are authorized to use it and also don't forget to go to the uh, Google Cloud console and um, enable the API for the uh, cloud translation okay uh, the two very important points if not it's not gonna work um, going back to Visual Studio Code uh, once we started or initiated that object of the curl server then we need to set up the 
parameters to make the call that we're going to be needing. So we need to communicate with the Google Translate API. So we need to create the JSON that we're going to be sending. On the last files, I just kind of posted the JSON in there like on a string and we modified it a little bit. This way, this week we are going a step um, we're taking an additional step and we're using PHP to encode that JSON um, string for us, if you can call it. Uh, why am I doing that? Because when you are sending the request, you can ask for multiple strings. So we can put all those strings in an array and then request that API, you know, to translate them for us. But if we want to use them later on, you know, if, if it's just on a string, we can't really work with them. But in this scenario, because it's in a standard class, we can work with it as long as we don't override it. So what I'm doing right here is, you know, I'm creating the, the queue pretty much means the strings uh, and you can go in the documentation to find all this information. The target language, uh, Spanish. Uh, the source language, English, and the format, it's text. We're just providing text. You can do text or HTML. And these last two ones, they're only optional. So if you don't have them, it's not that big of a deal. It's just uh, you, you specify what you're sending over to get the best results possible. Uh, for the languages, you can go to the documentation. If we go back here. Um, right here where it says la language support and then it'll give you all the different languages that that we can use with it so let's go back one step um, again the queue that's just the input to the text to translate target the format the source um, language again and uh, you can select the model that you want to use or if you want to use well, this one, it's not really for training because you we are using OAuth 2 to authenticate. Uh, this is just in case you are doing it without the proper authentication. Uh, for the model, when you go to the advanced API, then you can use that. We're just using the basic API right now. Uh, but there's ways to where you can use your own dictionary. So let's say that you're in a technical field and certain words translate a certain way. You can do a custom dictionary uh, to translate them. So that's I think that's pretty cool. But again, for right now, we're just focusing on working with the API. So we're going, you know, the most basic possible. Uh, and then once we you provide that information, it's going to give us a JSON response back, which pretty much has the um, the translation on there. On there. And on top, uh, this is the URL that we need to send the request to using a uh, post. All right. So let's go back here. So um, again, we have this, the strings we want translated, the target language, the source language, the format that it's in. And this right here, it's was going to turn it into JSON. PHP is going to encode it for us. It's uh, pretty simple. You know, I'm just I'm making a new variable because, as I mentioned, we're going to be reusing this information in the future. Uh, so I just create a new variable called JSON parameters, uh, encoding this object where we have all the information. And then uh, right here is where we, this line is where we make the request, the post request to the URL that we found on the on the documentation. And we're passing the JSON parameters that we created or PHP created for us using the object we created. Uh, so that's pretty much about it. We get a response, we store the response and that we can work with it. Um, what I do in my example, uh, I have an HTML display code, which is this section right here. It's just basically a small container uh, with a title tag. And then I'm using a for each loop to loop through the um, received information that way I can display it in a nicer way so you can pretty much do it in tables uh, containers dips you know whatever you want to do uh, maybe you're not even displaying it maybe uh, it's something to be stored I don't know uh, but definitely you know that's kind of how you work with the results so I just wanted to show you you just need to look through them and then um, you can just display it as you want and then at the bottom it's just some basic CSS styling you know kind of 
breaking it up the page and organizing it this you don't need at all the html you don't need at all uh so from here on it's just i'm oh, sorry all this bottom section it's just for displaying it so if it's confusing don't even worry about that um I'm going to show you actually. So right here we have this debugging section that I usually leave and uh, I'm going to uncomment that out and then we're just going to erase all this really quick. I'm going to save it. It uploads to my server. Let's go back to the example. We're going to refresh it and there we go. So we don't have the HTML side of it. We just have the uh, the JSON that we receive, and basically we receive the data with translations, uh, spot zero, spot one, and then that's the, the translation. It doesn't give you the original text, so that's why as I mentioned, usually like if you're gonna reuse it, you wanna keep it, like set it aside, that way um, you can kind of work with it, as I mentioned, as we are doing in my example. So I'm just gonna go and do undo, and do again. Commenting out, commenting it out. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. We're going back and then refreshing. So that's how we display. It's basically, it, this is the H1 tag, H2 tag, just a little P tag, um, breaker bar. This is the translation number one uh, with the original, another breaker bar, translation number two, and then the original. How do I go back and uh, get the original? So when you're looping it, you get the key, uh, you know, on your loop, of course, and then you get the, the translated text. So you pose the translated text that you're receiving, but then you're going back to the original parameters, uh, Q, which is the strings, and then you're using the key uh, for that translated object to reference the original um, array and that way you can kind of post it that way cross-reference them that way and uh, that's pretty much about it it's a simple example it's a basic example hopefully we I didn't make it too complicated trying to make it a little bit more fancy uh, but again if you have any questions just feel free to reach out and I'll try to help you out the best that I can um, there's also if you have questions about JSON and code, you can go to the PHP documentation and it can tell you all the information that you want to know about it. Basically, as I mentioned, it returns a string containing the JSON representation of the supplied value. Uh, if the parameter is an array or an object, it will be serialized recursively. So that pretty much means, you know, we use the object and then we are creating the JSON representation so that we can send it over. Uh, in a way, it's good because it, it, you know, it does certain things to make sure that the JSON is uh, encoded properly so that way you you uh, minimize the amount of errors that you can have but it's not really needed you can just do a string uh, with the JSON and and send that over and that's you know that's pretty much all that you need um, and again any you know issues go to the documentation there's a ton of information in there uh, and uh, and yeah you know so hopefully that helped out I'm just gonna go back to this page right here. And again, if I'm Gilbert with Interactive Utopia. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below and I'll try to help you out the best that I can. Thank you again and have a great day.